Hey guys, for some of you that are using PayPal with phone sites, you might have seen in the past we've created a video to share with you guys on how to set up uh, PayPal buttons for your sites. So <clears throat> in PayPal, if you were to go to uh, pay and get paid and then, uh, bear with me for a second, pay and get paid and accept payments, and there's PayPal buttons, uh, that's where you would have set up buttons before that look like this. You've probably seen these before on dozens of websites before, right? These are pretty standard buttons. Uh, PayPal has created something new called PayPal Checkout, which I think they've created that to check to uh, to compete essentially with Stripe's Checkout. Um, so I'm going to show you how you can set that up um, using PayPal and phone sites. Uh, I definitely suggest though you probably want to stick with these buttons over here. These are probably going to be a little easier for you to add into your phone site sites, but if you're Noticing the uh, the new option and you want to know how to get that added in this video is going to walk through that So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go back to pay and get paid and then up here at the top under accept payments I'm going to go to PayPal checkout And I apologize. I might be skipping over something here um, Possibly only because uh, I've already set up checkout before and it's possible that uh, PayPal needs you to take some sort of intermediary step uh, in between what I'm showing you right now and the next step. So you'll unfortunately need to um, look at PayPal's documentation. Uh, they've got a help section. You could probably do a YouTube video search or reach out to their support team if you get stuck. Um, but hopefully this covers 90% of what you need. So anyways, once you're brought here to PayPal checkout, you're going to click one of these options. Um, you've got uh, choose a way to integrate, start setup for uh, this is basically just like a, an individual item that you're looking to sell. Um, this is just the standard integration. This is probably what you're going to be adding in here. So you could add that in. And then there's the advanced integration. Um, I wouldn't use this. You, I haven't really used this too much, but um, you, you probably don't need that for what you're doing with phone sites. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, let's select the standard integration here. So let's go ahead and click on Start Setup. And then um, if I'm not a developer, I could use a pre-built solution that uh, they have here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that here. And so here on this page here, uh, I could change this, the, the button type, I, I could change that from like a fixed price, single select list, variable price, could put in a description, change the item pricing, uh, currency, if there's any shipping or anything like that. <clears throat> and then once I was ready, by the way, this is what your, your buttons are gonna look like on phone size. Once you're ready, then you go ahead and click on copy code. Also, one other thing too to point out here, you've got this option over here for button style. You can click on that and you can change um, the, the layout of the buttons themselves. And then you can have them rectangular or pill-shaped. Pill-shaped just means it's gonna be um, kind of slightly curved on the edges. And then you can change the, the colors uh, of the, the buttons themselves. And then you can change it to, to say something such as PayPal, checkout, buy now, or pay. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just copy my code that I've got. And let's just go put that into phone sites real quick. So in phone sites, I have a code block here. I'm just gonna put that right in here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and save my page here. And I already have it open on a new tab. I'm just gonna refresh this real quick so I can show you the buttons. So here's our buttons, and I'll just show you real quick how this is gonna show up on mobile. Real quick here. So there you go. So this is basically showing you how it's gonna look uh, on a, an iPhone X. Um, if we wanted to change how this might look on, say, for example, like a Pixel 2 or something like that, or an iPad, iPad Pro. So there you go. So that's how it's gonna look, pretty much. Let's go back to our site here. Now, if they click through PayPal, this should be redirected over to a PayPal payment page. I think I have this set up for like a, a product for like a buck or something like that. Yeah, so I had that set up uh, for just like a demo uh, product of a dollar. And then whoever was going to place the order, they would log in here. Uh, it's giving me this little warning message here just because PayPal sees that I'm trying to activate this page where I'm already logged into an account. And it's just saying that you're logging into the account of the seller for this purchase. So obviously, uh, if your, your lead was going through your PayPal page, they wouldn't see that warning message because they're not logging in with your information. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that real quick. One other thing I wanna point out 
And this kind of goes back to what I was saying before in terms of you might miss out 10% of, of how to set this up uh, simply because I already have PayPal checkout, checkout set up for pay PayPal. Um, what I wanted to point out is you might, um, at the start of creating your PayPal checkout experience, you might have to set up what's called an app within PayPal. The reason for that is because PayPal checkout is really intended for adding into an app, an application, and um, they may redirect you over to developer.paypal.com where you'd have to set that up. And that can get kind of confusing for folks that aren't really used to working in this type of environment. I've seen some folks try to set this up and what they end up doing is they create uh, an app in the, the sandbox environment. And really, that's just for testing. You don't want that for your phone site site. What you want to do is you're going to go to, you're going to um, hopefully be in developer.paypal.com forward slash developer applications. And it should be up here. Um, this first option under the dashboard section where it says my apps and credentials. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to create an app. So make sure that you click on live instead of sandbox. You might accidentally create a sandbox app and that's not going to run a charge through if someone goes through your uh, your funnel. It's just going to go through a test environment and you're going to get confused why it's not working. So click on the live button here and then click on create app. And let's just refresh this here real quick. Uh, it's because I'm not logged in. So let's log into the dashboard. Okay, so now that I'm logged in, I gotta give this app a name. So really quickly before I logged in, if you lost me, uh, I had just created a new app and I was uh, making sure to click on the option that was on the page where it said to, uh, the, I forget what it's called now, but basically live app is what I was clicking on and not the sandbox uh, app. Anyways, let's go ahead and give this a name. Let's just call this phone sites uh, demo two or something like that. Then click on create app. Okay, so now you don't have to do anything with uh, your PayPal account or the client ID or anything like that. You don't have to add in like the secret or anything like that into uh, phone sites. Um, your app should be good. If I go back here and click on my apps and credentials real quick, we should see, I think there's like three different uh, apps. So click on live. Okay, so we've got that app added in here. You can see it, uh, the phone sites demo two, it's added under live. Um, again, make sure that you're not uh, setting this up under sandbox unless if you're testing this out, you know what you're doing. But what you want though is you want to use the, the live app. So I'm going to select the phone sites demo two app when I go back into uh, PayPal. So right now I'm in the PayPal developer uh, account here. But I want to go back into PayPal, back where we were before where I had created that uh, button to put back in phone sites. Um, so let's just refresh the page here real quick. That way our drop down is actually going to have all four of these options because before it only had three in there. Uh, let's see here. Let's select, we want phone sites demo two. And so now by selecting phone sites demo two, that's going to connect with what we just created back here. So most likely when you go to set this up, you're only going to have uh, one app. That's fine. I have three or four in here from where I've uh, done demos or something like that. Okay, so back over here, create PayPal pay, uh, payment buttons tab. We've selected the correct API app and now button details. If I wanted to change any of this, I could. Uh, I'll just put it, uh, let's say single select list. And if I wanted to add in a bunch of options, I could do that. So let's just say, um, I don't know, social media marketing. Let's just say it's one dollar add in another option uh facebook ads we'll say that's two dollars and if i want to change the button style let's just put these at horizontal kind of curious to see how that's going to look let's go ahead and click on copy code and let's go back over here to phone sites and we're going to replace this code from where i put that in there before we want the new code in there select save back to this tab for the site refresh this we got a drop down here so i could pick which one one of these i wanted to pay for so let's say facebook ads 
And let's say I wanted to pay with PayPal credit. So there we go. So now I could charge someone two bucks for Facebook ads. All right, guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.